Our final honoree of the night is Kevin Hauser. He's at Oregon State University, and Kevin will be introduced by Mark Rausch. Please welcome Mark. This reminds me of my first visit to a proctologist. <laughs> and about halfway through the scoping, I said, how on earth does one get into this kind of work? <laughs> you don't need to know. Uh, and the guy said, well, I went to my first uh, medical conference and the only people that would talk to me and that, I, that I, could, I met were the proctology people. He says, and I met the guy on my very first conference who wrote the book on proctology. And that's what this industry is. <laughs> we, it's such a small group of people and we're all so tightly connected. You made me do this. <laughs> It's, it's just very impressive. Mm. You got this. Maybe. <laughs> I went to Light, Light, Light Fair last year in New York. I have never hugged more people in my life. <laughs> anyway, that's not why we're here. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll relate the airplane story that you've all had. What do you do? I'm in lighting. <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> yeah. uh, what the hell is lighting? Yeah, uh, and and I, I used to say, well, I'm an architect that specialized in lighting and went to work for manufacturers and became a marketing executive and later very, very detailed in education. That didn't go over. So now I say, you know, every space indoors and out that has people in it has lighting. And then they go, oh. Now all of us had to learn from someone. My mentor was Robert Smith. Um, his name, by the way, I've never been able to speak publicly. <laughs> But there are fascinating people in this room. And, th and they've been very open to me. I know everyone here, except you two West Coasters. <laughs> Love you, Don. <laughs> what is it with this industry that the East Coasters and the Midwesterners all know each other, and the West Coasters, it gets a little hard to meet? So it's, it's a pleasure to meet you. Do what? Well, there's anomalies. You're an anomaly. You know, a couple of you West Coasters. I've, I've known Chip forever and, and, uh, and uh, Jim Binya and others. Um, but, but Patty, I, I barely know, and Denise, I barely know. I, I think, Patty, we've shaken hands once or twice, but, you know, very, very limited. The rest, I, I've known way too long. Um, but we're here, actually, to honor Kevin Hauser. And uh, Kevin is a very interesting fellow, very extraordinary guy, and I'm so glad that he's younger than I am. Uh, and, and getting this award. Kevin uh, graduated Penn State with a PhD in 97 and his first job out of school uh, was working for me at the Phillips uh, Lighting Education Center. Uh, and and uh, Kevin was extraordinary as the manager of education there uh, and uh, I knew that he was in the wrong place because he is a consummate educator, academic educator, a consummate researcher, and he's just too damn smart to do what I've done for a living. <laughs> uh, it's also, um, Dawn mentioned jumping out of an airplane. I did that at Penn State University. Kevin calls me on a Tuesday and says, the students are gonna jump out of an airplane uh, and do some skydiving this weekend. We'd like you to come along. Well, I remembered Professor Robert L. Smith, who told me once, uh, don't ever jump out of an, a perfectly good airplane. 
this is not wise, you know. And I said, Kevin, I, I've been advised not to do that. And, and Kevin like this, he goes, you can turn it into a fundraiser. Which was his wife's idea, he, he told me later, right? Uh, but, but that caught me just like that, and I said, okay, I'll do it. Uh, and thanks to the ILD office and the people who are clever there, I, I, the next day we turned around a picture. Uh, I was at a podium once and I had my mouth open like this. <laughs> and they pasted that on some guy jumping out of an airplane and put a challenge out. And I'm pissed off at all of you who said, I'll donate if you jump without a parachute. <laughs> That wasn't very nice. <laughs> I still raise money anyway. Mm. Okay, so, uh, but that was Kevin, and uh, our, our association at Penn State with the students is, is wonderful. Uh, I was invited uh, a couple of times to Nebraska uh, when Kevin was there. Uh, that is also wonderful, and uh, uh, Oregon is lucky to have him, and you haven't invited me there yet. <clears throat> but. Uh, there's nothing uh, better than speaking to students. Now, I happen to have here, and this is a lesson to all of you, especially those of you who are young, Kevin's curriculum vitae. And you might notice that this doggone thing is 30 pages long, single spaced, and has absolutely everything this man has ever done in it in chronological order and very, very well ordered in terms of all of the articles, all the papers, all the research, all the committees, all the boards, everything that Kevin has ever done. Now, I've actually been put up for an award or two, and it amazes me how poorly I've kept track of the things that I've done. So my uh, advice to all of you, regardless of where you are in your career, start writing this shit down. <laughs> Because it is so hard to forensically determine what the heck you've done over your lifetime, right? Uh, but Kevin is an extraordinary individual, uh, dedicated completely to education, and for that I have written this citation as his proposer. Dr. Kevin Hauser has devoted his life's work to academic pursuits far beyond an accomplished teaching career to include all aspects of knowledge sharing, including significant research contributions, abundant published articles and industry presentations, and an illustrious habit of influential volunteerism in numerous boards as chair and participating member on numerous technical education and service committees in the IES and other industry organizations. Kevin has been a founding faculty member at two universities to create lighting specialties within architectural engineering programs, Nebraska and Oregon, <clears throat> while also contributing to the well-established Penn State program as professor for way too long. Hundreds of his students, I added to on that one, hundreds of his students are now significant contributors to the lighting industry following his example, and in his vitae, just like Dave Delora, is a list of the doctoral, the postgraduate uh, students uh, that he has influenced, and it is an impressive list. Although I can't pronounce half the names, so I'm not going to do it. <clears throat> this legacy brings us to one primary conclusion. Dr. Kevin Hauser has demonstrated constant professional and personal dedication to influence knowledge transfer at the highest levels, for which we now recognize with this Lifetime Achievement Award. Ladies and gentlemen, Kevin. Uh, do I have to stand here? Yes. No, no, no. Go with you. Uh, no. Can, can, yes, because please, you have a microphone. Yeah. yeah, I am totally not used to being tethered behind a podium. I want to roam. Mark, thank you very much. I appreciate it. So when I graduated from Penn State with my PhD, I think Mark took a massive risk on me. So I was being hired as manager of lighting education in a corporate facility where I was going to be teaching professionals about lighting. And meanwhile, I was an egghead, a geek. I was completely untested with social skills. <laughs> I was supposed to be entertaining as much as I was supposed to be educating. 
And, and so I, I truly thank Mark for seeing something in me that I didn't know that I had and was able to unlock. And so one of the reasons I took that job was because I'm like, this is going to be hard. Like the technical stuff, I got that. So by the way, Mark, what did you score on the NCQLP exam? Ninety-one. Ninety-eight. <laughs> <laughs> Ongoing joke between us. <laughs> and after I left, after I left Phillips, um, only eighteen months after I joined and went into an academic career, I was very fortunate that Mark continued to be very supportive, even though I was leaving. Maybe he was actually supportive because I was leaving. <laughs> Yeah, right. So one thing that I've tried to do in my academic career is I've really tried to stay connected to the lighting industry. You all, many people hear about the separation you have between the academic world and the commercial world and how one is doing one thing, the other is doing another. I've certainly endeavored not to let that happen. And I found a home in the lighting community and in the lighting industry because as I've reached out, Throughout my academic career, I've always received so much back in return. So at Nebraska, I had a grant from the Knuckles Fund for Lighting Education. In fact, Chip, where are you? Chip, Charles, um, Gary Gordon, other people helped me with that process uh, to help develop a curriculum that was rooted in fundamentals but was also relevant to what we believed what industry needs were. I got tired of the startup mode, which is why I eventually moved to Penn State, but then I got restless, which is why I moved to Oregon State to start a new program where, again, I'm working with lighting industry partners. So I've been very fortunate that in my academic career, through my research, through my education, there's been about 30 lighting industry partners that have financially supported the educational and research activities that I've been working on. And so I'm super grateful for people in this room and people outside of this room that have helped me in my academic career connect with the professional community. So I don't know if this joke is appropriate, but I, but I do want to say, I think in the program, it was kind of age before beauty. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm the youngest one here. And I, I like, who said half-life? Who is that? Randy. Yeah, Randy. Okay. I like that because it feels a little radioactive. So I'm going to think of this as a half-lifetime achievement award. And I'm truly grateful to Randy and Edison Report and the judges for bestowing this honor of me. For, so thank you. I'm the last one. You can get back to your drinks. Have a great night. Thank you. Yeah.